Dude, I absolutely hate working. Like, who actually needs a job? It's so unnecessary and stupid. Like, oh wow, let me work my life away to survive, but never actually get the chance to live. Woohoo. It's stupid and awful. I hate it. God, you're so lucky you just stock fish in a freezer. Dealing with customers is shit. Like, alright, listen to this. So you know the motto, the customer is always right, or whatever junk that is? Bunch of BS right there. Certified below- Bridgeport, Washington. December 12th, 2016. A quiet little town north of Tacoma, where nothing happens and nothing ever will happen. I know, usually after that one-liner. Something miraculous happens, changing the city forever. Trust me, it won't. I guess I should introduce myself. The name's Adeline and, well, this ball of retail fury. This is my best friend, Fritz. I swear our conversations don't usually end up this one-sided, but I don't know. Ever since I woke up today, things have felt odd. Kind of like, um, something. Could be the smallest thing that changes and you just can't put your finger on it and it rubs you the wrong way. Fun stuff? Nah, and you know what she did? Take a get. No? Okay, you're not gonna guess. Anyways, she takes the whole candy rack and flips it over like some crazy chick. Of course I called security and got her ass hot out of the EZ Mart. Hey, um, Adeline, you doing alright? You're out of it today. Everything going good? We were about halfway through our daily walk through downtown, passing by the animal shelter, when Fritz began to frantically wave their arms in front of my face, as if I was suddenly a million miles away and large gesticulations were the key to reeling me back into reality. Admirable, but false. Although it was safe to say that their sudden loss of words and the worry building up did shake me back to our current conversation. Uh, huh? Sorry, I'm not... not... I... You seem really off today. Was it another fish accident? <laughs> what? G no! God, no! Trust me, if they did, that would have been the first thing I told you. The reference to the fish accident, as well put by Fritz, is not really important. Although, reminiscing on the accident did leave an awful taste lingering. As we walked along, idly chatting, Fritz continued to fill me in on the ongoings in their life. A few drops on the bridge of my nose turned my head upwards, towards the dark clouds beginning to roll over the two of us. It wasn't unusual for it to rain in Washington. Honestly, it was a given it was going to rain at any particular moment. Oh, what the hell? It was clear skies a minute ago. You're telling me? God damn it, I didn't cover my bike. You're worried about your bike right now? The wind's going to blow me away if we don't hurry up. As the rain began to come down heavier, the two of us decided to pick up our pace, planning on taking shelter at Fritz's place until... well, it stopped raining. Which, unfortunately, didn't look like it was going to happen anytime soon. So here we were, running in the pouring rain, my hoodie doing an awful job of shielding me from the water. Are you kidding me? Who's calling you right now? We take shelter under the nearest overhanging roof we can find. Thankfully, downtown had a lot of those to offer. I fished my phone out of my pocket to see it's my sister calling. Now, the thing about this is that we haven't talked in a long while. My memory gets a little hazy when I try to think back on the last time I had direct contact with her, between all the messages through our sister back and forth and via her boyfriend. It's been that long. So as I hit the accept call button, my stomach begins to sink. Noriko? What do you want? Adeline, where are you right now? Currently? Out of the rain. Listen, I would love to shoot the breeze and talk about how it's been years since you've decided to talk to me, but I have better things to do right now. Make it quick. I know. I, I'm sorry, Adeline. I wouldn't be calling if it, if it wasn't serious. I mean, I, I should have called before, and I'm sorry, but everything happened so quickly, and I... I know. Get to it. Tell me why you're calling. You're freaking me out. It, Dad. It's Dad. At that very moment, I knew. All you can ever really do is brace for the worst, and it happens. They, they're they saying, the, the, the police, they're saying it was a freak accident. Things just lined up, and he, he just hit the guardrail and fell. And the driver called the police, and I, I was the first one they contacted. Are you in town right now? I'm gonna take the next plane over. 
Hey Adeline, you... you okay? What did your sister have to say? Adeline, you're worrying me. Can you say something, please? Is everything alright? You're really freaking me out now. I want to go home. What? You do know it's downpouring right now, right? I thought we were going to wait it out or whatever. I just want... <sighs> Not today, Fritz. I'm going home. Can you call me a ride? Yeah, sure. Um, is everything okay? Just call the ride. And... That was about it. Yeah, I know. It was really shitty of me to just up and leave, but can you really blame me? People handle their emotions in different ways, and, well, I tend to just lock people out as quickly as I can, and that's that. I couldn't help shake the guilty feeling as I arrived home, paid the fare, and headed inside. I felt bad, of course, but there were worse things to feel bad about at the moment, such as receiving orphan status over the phone from my estranged sister. I trudged up the stairs, water sloshing around my shoes. I headed up to the third floor. The floors creaked below me as I headed towards my door. I fumbled with the keys for a bit and soon unlocked it. A faint meowing could be heard from the room over as I headed in, setting my backpack on the countertop in my apartment. Hey, Deadeye. You hiding? Come on out. Nothing. Although the meowing continued, and I took it upon myself to track him down. It wasn't that hard to find him, thanks to the fact that my rundown apartment was about two rooms big, and that's a stretch itself. If he wasn't lurking in this room, it was definitely the other one. I pulled off the covers from my bed to find him sprawled out underneath, like some greedy bastard who owned the place. Probably dead at this point. I reached towards Deadeye to scratch him behind the ears, when suddenly he lunged for my hand and ensnared it within his paws. Ah, how, 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 let go! You think this is cute, don't you? You little shit! Let go! I managed to wrestle my hand away and rubbed the pink marks that he left behind. Claiming victory, Deadeye swayed his tail at me and sauntered away into the other room, leaving me to nurse my wounds. I let out a groan and crashed onto my bed, soaking wet and all. I ignored the buzzing of my phone and drifted off into sleep. And God, did it feel amazing to rest. It wasn't until a few hours later that I was startled awake in the dead of night by my cat's insistent meowing and the sound of something clattering on the floor. I groggily pulled myself out of bed to investigate what my cat had broken now, although apprehension began to take over when I noticed the flickering of light through the crack in the door. I tried the light switch by the door. It seemed the bulb was dead. Just great. I began to nudge the door open with my foot when I began to hear garbled noises coming from the next room. Definitely not my cat. I backed up from the door and searched around for anything to use as protection, the best being my heavy college textbook. Gathering courage and chalking up my fears to nothing more than an overactive imagination at 2 a.m., I slowly entered the other room, book in my hands, ready to swing if needed. I eyed the room, taking in the sight of it being an absolute mess. Newspapers covered the floor, and my pans were scattered on the ground. I lowered the book inside, about to head over to pick up my cookware when something caught my eye. The TV. It wasn't catching any channels at the moment, which, being as ancient as it was, made sense in a storm. But the part that sent everything spiraling was, on closer inspection, it was leaking. Like, actually leaking static. Don't ask me why, but I felt compelled to touch it, almost as if it was speaking to me and beckoning me forth. So I did. I touched it. Do you know that feeling when a certain body part just falls asleep and it's tingly and alarming and you can't really sense it, but you sense it too much? I'm not making too much sense here, but it's... I can't describe it. Pins and needles, maybe? I started to pull my hand away from the mass and it seemed almost trying to tug me back into it. I yanked my hand out and the sensation lingered for a few seconds before fading. I was enraptured by the phenomenon, seemingly mesmerized, when a loud crash shook me out of my dazed state. I had fallen backwards out of surprise and found myself staring upwards into the face of an overhanging amorphous creature. It seemed to be always shifting its mass and falling back into itself. I quickly pushed myself away and stood up, stumbling towards my wall to put space between. What the hell are you? 
I reached towards the flower pot on my windowsill and chucked it towards the creature, only for it to be absorbed upon contact. The figure seemed unperturbed by my attempt to harm it and slowly began making its way towards me. It sloshed around as it moved. It lost and regained parts of its body as it drew near. I turned around to haphazardly try and open the window, yanking and tugging at the latch on it, only for it to break off. Are you kidding me? The thing picked up its speed and seemed to charge towards me, growing legs as it moved to help pull it closer, only for them to move back into its body. I narrowly ducked out of the way as fast as I could, catching a glimpse of the monster splattering into my apartment wall, deforming into puddles of the static material. I stared for a moment in horror at what just happened, looking around for any sign, any clue that would help me understand what was going on. What the hell happened to my flower pot? It's gone? That asshole ate it! I never did find out exactly what happened to my flower pot. Although not like it mattered. I couldn't grow anything for the life of me. Anyways, I quickly went to the bedroom and grabbed my phone off the bed. I turned it on and began to dial Fritz's number. As if they would be able to do anything about the situation. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Come on, now's not the time to get your sleep schedule in order. Come on, wake up. Answer the phone. How, how do I do this? Oh, 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 it's going? Oh, hey, sorry, you reached my voicemail or something. Um, just, you know, do the thing you do. Leave a message after the beep. Yeah, sounds about... Fritz, I am going to murder you the next time I see you. I... What? I was too preoccupied with cursing out my friend over a voicemail that I barely noticed that the static oozing out of my television had now reached the bedroom door. I carefully stepped into the gaps in the floor that were free of the liquid and made my way closer to the TV. It wasn't until I reached my couch that I noticed there was something enveloped in the liquid on my floor. It was humanoid in shape, slouched over, occupied with pulling itself out of the static with relative ease that it hadn't noticed I was there. I went to step away when I felt something move behind me. <gasps> the thing's head snapped towards my direction at the noise. It stared blankly at me. It didn't have a face, but I could feel it boring into my soul. Duck. And I did. I cowered, holding my head as I ducked, and before I knew it, I heard a splatter behind me and felt a splash of the static hit my back. I turned around slowly to see that whatever was behind me was gone now and its remains were currently on my back and my walls. A few seconds later, the static liquid on the wall and on my back began to change color into a deep, dark red, imitating blood. The numb sensation on my back dissipated shortly afterwards. Although, that didn't stop more static from pouring out of my television, taking on multiple forms and dispersing throughout the room. I frantically looked around at all the creatures that had just appeared, and then my eyes locked on the one figure who had spoken a few moments ago. It seemed unbothered by the numerous beings that had just formed. In fact, it was still focused on me, and only me. The moment seemed to stretch on forever, and I could feel myself being pulled into the figure's blank visage. The thunder boomed outside my apartment, and following it, the static beings broke down their forms and dispersed, escaping my apartment through any cracks possible. The television as well had gone dark, and the constant flow of liquid from it stilled. I looked around in confusion before settling back on the only oddity in my apartment now, the figure. The man? I wasn't too sure at the time as to what it, he, was. Hey, uh... You mind telling me what the fuck just happened? The man seemed to be studying his hand with a keen interest before looking back over towards me. You. And that was the moment when I sprinted, darting towards my front door. I had almost reached it when the man shot out some black liquid towards it, landing on the frame, sealing both of us in my apartment. I quickly moved away and headed towards the windows, ready to break them when I felt a strong force compelling me to stop. The figure began to make his way over toward me before gracefully tripping over the coffee table that sat between us. He face-planted, and I took that opportunity to back myself into a corner. I was on the verge of tears. Actually, no, I was in tears at that point. <laughs> Please, Mr. Scary Static Slender Man, don't kill me! Can you just stop freaking out for like one minute? Let me explain things first before you start bawling your eyes out. Please don't kill me. This is my dad's No, I'm gonna Stop. And I did. 
It was the same sensation from earlier I felt that stopped me from attempting to break my window and escape. I sat there stunned, looking at him for further explanation, although I received none. What did you do? I, what? Shouldn't I be asking that? Of course you're of no use. Do you even know what those things were? No. Can you please enlighten me? What dimension is this? Huh? You're kidding, right? Oh, you're not. Oh, God. Uh, the, the, the third, the third dimension. I suspect it as such. This corporeal form explains it. You said those things. What are they? There isn't an exact word to describe them. Well, what do they do then? What happened? They were feeding. Specifically on you, um, as well as every everything in the surrounding area. They're incredibly dangerous due to the fact that they will consume everything they touch. You're lucky you didn't lose an appendage. Um, they grow quickly and are incredibly difficult to get rid of due to how fast they spread, and you just released a good handful. I didn't do anything, though. Doesn't matter. You somehow provided the perfect gateway for them to come through. Oh, God. Wait. How did you... When you did the thing that... You killed one of them. It turned red and exploded. What did you do? How did you do that? There are no words in your language to explain it. Consider it a power. Yeah, yeah, let's go with that, a power. My language? English? How do you know English? I don't. Technically, anyway. I'm simply transmitting directly to your brain, and it's taking my transmissions and altering them into a frequency you can perceive and understand. That just so happens to be your mother language. English. You're not actually talking? I don't have a mouth. All right. You got me there. I would just love to stay and communicate, really. But uh, my hold on this body feels weak as is, and I'd rather not stay in it too long. So I will be going. Wait, wait. You have to help me. You know about those creatures. You killed one. Please, you have to help me. They, they escaped. No. You dragged me here. And uh, I'm out of here now. Bye bye the figure had begun to move away, carefully this time, as if to not make the mistake again of tripping over anything. He moved back to my TV and stared at it for a moment before pressing his hands onto the screen. He seemed to be pushing hard against it, but to no avail. Nothing happened. What did you do to it? What did I do to what? He motioned to the TV. I don't know. I didn't do anything. It seems like the lightning strike killed it, as well as your way back. Ugh. Okay, 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 fine, fine. I, I can work with this. I think. Well, looks like we both need help, huh? You, you help me get rid of whatever is running rampant in my city, and I'll, I'll find a way to bring you back to your dimension. I sincerely doubt that anybody, even you, could do that. I created the opening, didn't I? I can recreate it. I had caught his interest. Fine. You help me return to my dimension, and I'll help you get rid of your past problem. Deal? Deal. Mm -hmm.